between a T-Rex and Bobcat equipment, and Doc, acquiring the antidote to save Thrush and the world, only to be gunned down and burned by the government. Carnosaur stood at the crossroads of a new era of film. CGI would become the go-to, and though practical effects would never fully die, Rick Baker closing the shop was time moving on. Give Carnosaur as much shit as you'd like, but back then, you couldn't just render a monster. You had to build it, light it, and block it. The irony is not lost on me that Roger Corman adapted to this stoner comedy type of horn sci-fi that I loathe. And I can't blame him. I understand the need to keep up. All I can do is take my ending, walk away, and leave on a high note. With the recent passing of Bourdain and Joe Blow turning 20 years old last month, I'm feeling a bit introspective. I look back at Carnosaur and I'm reminded that this represents a moment. When I see another lazy sci-fi release, I look back and smile. I was lucky enough to be around at a time where critters, gremlins, and Nazi puppets flooded the market. We had all the momentum. We were riding the crest of a high and beautiful wave. So now, many years later, it's all a distant memory. You can go up on a steep hill in Hollywood and look out. And with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see the high water mark. That place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. Life is quick. Enjoy what you can while you can. I may hate this new wave of cult, but I do believe it's necessity. There is a much needed film balance between the brilliant and the midnight specials. Together, they make up this little thing called life.